There's a passage where the Buddha tells of an image that appeared to him before he left the forest, left to go out into the forest. He said he saw the whole world as a bunch of fish in a small, dwindling puddle, fighting one and over for the last gasp of water, that last gulp of water, before they're all going to die. He said everywhere he looked, he saw nothing that wasn't already laid claim to. Everywhere he looked, there was nothing but competition. He wanted to get out. That image describes the feeling that's called sangwega, a sense of dismay over the way life is lived, and an urgency to want to get, get out of that way. But it's also a useful image to hold in mind when you're thinking of spreading thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill is one of the guardian meditations in the sense that it guards you from your own defilements. But it's also a nourishment. And the image is useful, both to warn you of how to guard yourself and also how to gain nourishment from goodwill. On the guardian side, it helps you look at the things that might give rise to ill will for other people. And usually see, it comes down to the sense of competition. They're getting in the way, they're doing something either to you or to people you love. And there's a sense that you're being violated by their actions. But when you look at the world as basically a fish struggling to get that last gulp of water, you begin to realize that the things that you would compete with other people for are not really worth ill will. And this isn't to say that as we normally live in the world that we don't try to make things better than they are. But there are so many things you realize that you can't change. In particular, while you're sitting here right now, it is very easy when the mind is quiet and you're off by yourself to start thinking about old wrongs. The people have harmed you, the injustices you've been subjected to. And it's good to hold that image in mind. The things you're competing for are just that last cup of water and then everybody's going to die. So why get tied up in your will? You're harming yourself if you do. So that's the guardian side. As for the nourishing side of goodwill, you realize that the happiness you're looking for now as you meditate is not in competition with anybody at all. Nobody's struggling to get to see your breath. You're not fighting with anyone else as you're trying to get the mind to settle down. It's all internal. You're not harming anyone. You can take joy in that fact. This is one of the reasons why when the Buddha talks about practicing goodwill, as in the sutta we chanted just now, it has to be based on a life that's a life of virtue, a life where you keep your senses under control, or as he says, keep your senses calm. In other words, you're not constantly looking for the newest flashy object or trying to listen to the for things that are attractive. You realize that your true happiness comes from within. You don't have to keep searching outside, because the more you're searching outside, the more you're going to get into conflict with other people. But if you're looking for happiness in a way that is in line with the precepts, you're not harming anybody. You're not greedy for things. Then it's a happiness that's pure. You can take joy in that fact. Your goodwill can be a goodwill that's sincere, it's not hypocritical. If you're harming people, but then you say, I have goodwill for everybody, your actions and your words aren't in line with each other. 
desperate for holding to the precepts and finding your happiness in ways that are in line with the precepts. You can take joy in the fact that you're not harming anyone. No one's competing with you for your happiness. And this gives energy to your practice. You can settle down and show some goodwill for yourself now by working with the breath, finding a way of breathing that feels good for the body right now. That's goodwill for yourself. But you realize that if you can find this sense of well-being inside, you're going to be less hungry for things outside. So you're increasing your ability to find happiness in a way that doesn't get into any conflict, that doesn't cause any laying of claim. You don't have to push every, anybody out of something they've already laid claim to. So it's good to have a sense as you're spreading goodwill to develop a sense of sung way to go along with it. That makes it a lot easier to step back from the things that you would normally want to fight over and say, no, nope, I don't need to fight over that. I don't have to have ill will for the people who are trying to take that, because I don't need that. I've got something better inside. There's a whole range of potentials inside that, once they're developed, can provide you with happiness that's much better than anything you can find outside. So you're developing both sangwega and the quality called basada, with confidence that this is a good path. And as you actually see yourself practicing and realizing, look, like, this doesn't get into conflict with anybody, it becomes more than just confidence. It becomes something you really know. So on days when you find yourself tied up in thoughts of ill will, think about that image of the fish. Realizing that you don't want to be one of those fish. This must be something better. And if you're tied up in thoughts of ill will, you're like a fish upset at another fish for taking that gulp of water. But then they're both going to die. And so you can let go of your ill will out of a sense of sangwega and of goodwill instead. Goodwill doesn't mean that you have to like people. And you're not thinking that goodwill is a magic cloud that's going to spread out and make everybody happy. You simply want people to find true happiness, to understand the way to find true happiness, and to actually have the willingness and strength to do that. In one of the phrases where the Buddha describes goodwill, he says, may these beings look after themselves with ease. You're not necessarily saying you're going to be there for them, you're hoping they're there for themselves. In line with that principle that happiness comes from our actions. So we can step back from trying to get that last gulp of water. You realize that goodwill is something very easy to develop. Even for people who have taken all the water you might have wanted, because now you know you've got something better, or at least the prospect of something better. And that thought will make the mind more inclined to want to settle down and be at ease with the breath, and actually find that happiness within. 